Have you ever struggled to forgive someone? Look, I'm going to be honest with you. Forgiveness is something that's really hard for me and maybe for you as well. See, when somebody hurts me or somebody that I love, my my natural response is to uh, set expectations of them if I'm ever going to forgive them, right? That when somebody hurts me, I expect the other person to earn my trust again. I expect them to uh, some way or another do enough good around me or towards me that I can say, okay, I forgive you. Is it just me or do you, maybe you struggle with the same thing? Do you find yourself struggling to forgive others at times? See, I think all of us do. The reality is that when people hurt us, we have some expectations that we set. We don't want to be hurt again, and we don't want the same person to hurt us twice. And so we set these expectations, right? Prove to me that you won't hurt me again. Prove to me that you won't do this. Prove to me that you have changed, and and then I'll forgive you, right? That's what we tend to say and do. But, but I want you to hear me say this. The expectation we set on others when we are asked to give forgiveness is nothing compared to the expectation God sets on us, on you and me, when we ask for forgiveness. In fact, it's the total opposite. See, the way God forgives you and I is completely different. It goes completely against the way we tend to forgive one another. Let me explain. We've been journeying through the book of Romans as we uh, go through this series called Forgiven. And uh, we're we're looking at what forgiveness is and and what we're forgiven from and how we're forgiven. And and, and today in particular, I want to focus on this verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 28. It says, For we hold that our person is justified by faith, apart from works prescribed by the law. We hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. A person is justified by faith, not works. A person is justified by faith, not works. I need you to understand uh, and remember that line because it's really important. Now, before I dive too far into that, that, that section of Scripture, I want to talk about the word justified, right? We believe that a person is justified, is what our, our, our Scripture, uh, our text says. Now, uh, if you've been following this series, you know that every week we've talked about the word justified, and it's very important. We need to understand what it means to be justified if we're ever going to believe that we are forgiven. And so our text begins by, uh, a person is justified, in his sermon, The, the Scripture Way of uh, Salvation, John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, defines justification as this. Justification, or justified, is another word for pardon. It is the forgiveness of all our sins, and what is necessarily implied therein, our acceptance with God. Let me say that one more time. Justification is another word for pardon or forgiveness. Justification is the forgiveness of all our sins. And what is necessarily implied therein by uh, saying uh, that someone is justified is acceptance with God. You see, to be justified means to be forgiven To be justified means to be made right with God. To be justified means that you've been accepted by God, that you are a child of God. To be justified means you are forgiven. So listen to this text one more time. The the original, the the scripture text says, uh, for we hold that our person is justified by faith apart from works. But listen to it this way. We hold that a person is forgiven by faith. What about this way? We hold that a person is made right with God by faith. 
What about this one? We hold that a, a person is accepted with God, that they have been accepted by faith. You see, any time you read through your Bible and you, t- and you read about uh, justified, about being justified, about someone uh, who has experienced justification or being justified, what it is saying is that they have been forgiven. And in particular, our text says that forgiveness simply asks for faith. If you want to be forgiven, all God is asking of us is faith. Forgiveness requires nothing but faith from us. Now, let me stop here for a second because it's really important, right? The, the very first part of this uh, verse that we read says that uh, we are justified or forgiven by faith. And, and the rest of it is, is equally as important. It says uh, we are justified by faith, forgiven by faith, apart from works prescribed by the law. In other words, what it's saying is that we are forgiven by faith, not by our good works. We are forgiven by faith, not by how much good we can do. Uh, We are forgiven by faith, not by how good we are. We are forgiven by faith, period. Works are separate. See, I need you to understand this. God is not waiting for you to do enough good in the world in order to offer you forgiveness. God is not waiting for you to come up with the perfect uh, uh, project that will change the world in order to offer you forgiveness. God is not waiting for you to to earn his trust back. God looks at you and I and says, you are forgiven. I want you to hear this. You are a child of God, and because of that, forgiveness is yours. The question is, do you believe it? Do you believe it? See, forgiveness is not dependent on your good works. Because let me be honest here. You and I will never do enough good in this world to deserve God's forgiveness. You and I will never be good enough on our own to deserve God's forgiveness. There is nothing we will ever do that will be uh, sufficient in order for us to obtain God's forgiveness. Nothing. And I know that sounds, I don't know, kind of deflating, right? It it, it bursts our bubble sometimes because we're really trying to do good. But I want you to hear this. The only thing that is required of you and I in order for us to be forgiven is that we may have the faith to believe that God is who God says he is. That we may have the faith to believe in Jesus and that our uh, forgiveness falls uh, uh, solely on who Jesus is and what Jesus can do. We are forgiven by faith, not our works, because our works will never be good enough to gain forgiveness from God. That's good news right there. Now, let me be clear about something, though. I know it can be very easy, and Wesley was very cautious of this. It can be very easy to say, well, I'm forgiven. I don't need to do anything else, right? But that's not the case. In fact, it's the opposite. See, we are forgiven by faith, not works. Yes, that's correct. But works are still very important. See, we do works, right? works of mercy and justice and peace. We care for the least, the last, the lost, and the uh, lonely. We, we do good work in the world. We, we help uh, uh, our neighbor, right? We do these things not to gain God's forgiveness, because like I said, those things will never be good enough. We do these things as a response to God's forgiveness. Good works are not a prerequisite of forgiveness, They are a response to forgiveness. You and I were called to do good works because we are forgiven. You see, because you and I are forgiven, we're called to go out into the world and do good, to to, to bring uh, good news to the poor, to, to bring hope to the hopeless, 
You and I have been called to bring about the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven simply because we are forgiven and not, not to gain God's forgiveness. You are forgiven, therefore go out into the world and do good. You are forgiven, therefore go out into the world and bring about the kingdom of God. See, at Mid-City Church, one of our values is is, uh, active participation in the kingdom of God. We truly value and believe that all of us are called to play an active role in the kingdom of God, that we are all called to help bring about the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. But we do that not for the sake of earning God's forgiveness. We do that as a response to God's forgiveness. Now, look, I, I, I want to share this with you. For the longest time, I spent my life really trying to um, earn my forgiveness from God. I've shared with you many times that I have, uh, I have mistakes from my past that I wish I had never done, things I have said, people I have hurt, and, and I've tried for the longest time to be a better person so that I could gain God's forgiveness, so that I could win God's favor and be able to say, see, God, that wasn't me. I am good. But look, I'll be honest with you. There came a time in my life when I just got tired because no matter what I would do, I always felt like it wasn't enough. I mean, I remember weeks where I would go to the soup kitchen, to a soup kitchen and, and feed people. And then I'd go to the food bank and help there. And then I'd go on a mission trip. And then I'd, I, right, I'd, and then, and then, and then I'd do so much stuff to, I'd do so much good in the world. And then I'd come home and I'd say, okay, God, am I forgiven? And I felt like it wasn't enough. And I was tempted to give up. See, but that's why this text is so important. That's why it's so important to read our our Bibles, and and in particular Romans right now. (laughs) Forgiveness is dependent on faith, not works. See, what I didn't know then that I know now is that I was never going to do enough good in order to earn God's forgiveness. See, what I know now that I didn't know then is that all I had to do was believe that God loves me enough to forgive me. Look, my guess is that some of you are really struggling with this right now. Some of you are trying harder every single day to be a better person. Some of you are going through life trying to do enough good because uh, you, you want better for yourself and you want God to love you and you want God to forgive you and and you just feel like it's not enough. You feel like you're never good enough. You feel like no matter what you do, you're a bad person. You've made too many mistakes. You've gone down the bad path for far too long. But I want you to hear me say this. Let it go. Let it go. You are not called to do good in the world in order to receive God's forgiveness. You're not. You never will do enough, ever. But the good news is that God is already offering you forgiveness. God loves you enough to say, son, daughter, beloved, you are forgiven. You are You're being offered forgiveness right now. There's nothing you need to do to earn it right now. God is looking at you and saying, you are forgiven. The question is, do you have enough faith to believe that it is true or not? See, you're never going to feel like you have done enough. But you are being offered forgiveness. Forgiveness is yours. Forgiveness is being offered to you right now. The question is, do you believe it? And if you do, will you live differently? 
My prayer is that the words of this sermon are good news to you. My prayer is that if you've been spending your life trying to do enough good works in order to gain God's forgiveness, that you will realize that you have already earned God's forgiveness. And so I pray you will keep doing those good works, that you will keep going out to the world and, and doing good, not for the sake of earning forgiveness, but as an affirmation that you are forgiven. Beloved, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Stop trying to earn that forgiveness. Start living like you're forgiven. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks that you're a God who loves us so much that we don't have to earn our forgiveness. God, I give you thanks that you love us so much that despite the fact that we will never do enough to earn your forgiveness, you look at us and say, that, remind us that we are forgiven. God, I pray that if we have spent our life trying to do enough good to earn your forgiveness, God, may our focus shift. May we go from trying to earn God's forgiveness to realizing that we're forgiven so that as we do good in the world, we may do it as a response, as an appreciation of our forgiveness rather than an attempt to deserve forgiveness. God, make this truth true in our lives. God, I pray this in your most precious and most glorious name. Amen.